We wanted to open a space in our community that represents us. Chinatown is our community. I'm trying to breathe new life into Cantonese food and experiencing food through my lens is what I believe Cantonese American food is. There's a long history in this location. Yo, this is who we are. We want to encourage people to come back to Chinatown. We're entering a new wave and a new generation of Chinatown. Here today to pick up some rice noodle rolls for our restaurant. Hello. Dum da lor sam sabong ti shun pa na. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is the one with the ha mai. This is just plain. They also sell like all the sort of tofus. Yeah. Yeah. This is sat di. Yeah, sat di. This is the one they make the tofus. Yeah. 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 Bye-bye. I am blessed to be able to get majority of my ingredients within Chinatown. Everything is a couple of blocks away. It's uh, honestly one of my favorite things to do when I get up in the morning. I'm able to speak to them in Cantonese and ask them how they're doing. Having a conversation with them, you can learn so much by just talking. So this is where we source our milk buns for our bowl of bao. This is just fresh out the oven. Yeah,你。我哥哥好多了。你那么热的时候。你哥哥好好生啫。我生了。我生了。我生了。我生了。我生了。我生了。我生了。我生了。我生了。我生了。我生了。我生了。我生了。我生了。我生了。我生了。我
I used to have to make gnocchi, which is a potato pasta, and I used to have to roll it out and cut it into these little squares. I saw the rice noodle rolls, and I'm like, huh. It was kind of like the same concept, but using rice noodles. I basically combined two of my favorite things growing up, churn fun and guan tang guo hao. Tiger walnut shrimp. Chinatown has a reputation of a go-to place for cheap eats. That narrative has to change. I don't think people really understand how much mastery, how much time, and how much process it takes to make Chinese food. Right now, I'm making the tiger jellyfish salad. Usually, in the beginning of Chinese banquet, you would get this big pile of jellyfish. This is the jellyfish that I have marinated already. Cilantro long-cut scallion, Chinese celery, rice vinegar, sesame oil, this. This is from my Mediterranean and Italian background. Lemon zest actually like brightens up the dish. I've been cooking for about 10 years now. My background coming out of school was mainly Italian and Mediterranean cuisines. My experiences eating my father's food, eating in Chinatown, eating in general with my friends and experiencing food through my lens is what I believe Cantonese American food is. In my whole lifetime, the food has pretty much stayed the same. I just felt it needed a new take. <laughs> my mom's a good baker. She has a good palate. Let's see how. Oh, yeah. yeah, that was actually the first time eating it. It was a little nerve wracking. I was afraid of what she was going to say. Okay. <laughs> wow, I, I was actually pleasantly surprised that she actually liked it. It is an accomplishment. Because she was really against it when I told her that I was going to go to culinary school. My parents, they moved to America to give me a better life. I felt like they've always wanted for me to be a lawyer or a doctor. <laughs> so you're always going to have this base of what Cantonese food is, everything you've grown up, but what you have here is similar, but it's very different. Some people might think there's no Chinese food. This is the culture of American Chinese. It, it took them a little bit, but once they got it, they're understanding it a little bit more. Oh, so my father, he really helped in the design of this place. He does interior design and construction. And bought this special tassel. There's an astronaut on top. I try to pick this to the, like the future of Chinatown and Chinese. Most of the detail we really base on the old Chinatown. More like a mixed match with some American vision of how our Chinese is. He didn't like this sign. The sign, yeah, they, they came up with it. <laughs> I think we didn't talk for like maybe two months. He did not talk to me or anyone on the team over the sign. You could say I'm stubborn. We end up the way it is. Turned out to be good. I mean, it, it came out great. My mom and my dad, they're both equally as critical. They'll never say, this is great and we're proud of you or whatever, uh, but I know that they care. That's why they're being critical. Are you proud of Cantonese? Oh, definitely. Of course I'm proud of it. I mean, you could guide your kid what to do, but even though sometimes I felt it's not gonna work, it's, I say, let them do it. I let them fail. They learn from their mistake. There's a long history in this location. 133 Christie is where my grandfather 
and my mom's side of the family had their family business for over 40 years. They distributed uh, Chinese produce and the main product was Kamian Jian Chinese sausage. I would go every summer, that was summer camp for me. You're gonna be here, you're gonna do some math homework, and then when your uncle needs help lifting boxes and going to all the supermarkets, that's what I did. <laughs> so yeah, my grandma's lived in Chinatown her whole entire life, as far as after coming to, to New York. It was kind of like a small, humble apartment. My dad definitely lived there. You know, when they had me, it kind of, the space was getting too small, so we eventually moved out over into downtown Brooklyn. You know, Brooklyn at that time was just a place to kind of, for us to sleep, but our life day to day was still in Chinatown. Growing up in Chinatown in the 90s, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, in the 90s and 2000s, you made all your friends at the park. You know, most of us were park rats. Pretty much here was where it all began. So this is really kind of where we all met. Kind of everyone went to middle school or high school together. And after school, you would kind of just like meet here. This is the time before cell phones and yeah. social media. It's like meet here at yeah. noon. Yeah. And then we would stay here from noon till how long? 1 a.m. 1 a.m. 2 a.m. sometimes, yeah. This is what we used uh, to I do. Haven't, I haven't actually sat here in such a long time. This is literally what we used to do every single day. Life was so much easier back then. <laughs> Life is so hard right now. Yeah, I know. I think I can still play. That's so off. Finally. This brick wall was our favorite kind of shop. It was a shop called Jinki. These photos were taken in what, 2006? Six. It was literally right here. When places close now, we're more sentimental now. We are on Elizabeth and Hester. This the best fresh rice rolls in New York. Probably been coming to this at least 15 years plus. Okay. Okay. This is chicken rice roll. We added egg, got the spicy chili oil on top, scallions. It's just good. Yes. I don't even know how to explain it. I mean, this is everything we grew up on. This is the quintessential Chinatown kid breakfast. Classic Pell Street, no frills barbershop. These are the people that take care of the community. Jin Tao Fa Jin Ne Ge Loi Ah. 24 years. 24 years. From Malaysia. Yes, and from Malaysia. Malaysia. Yeah. Chinatown is the story of my life. It raised us. Whether the business of Chinatown, the people of Chinatown. I know her since I came out the womb. <laughs> right? <laughs> it was our playground. We're the ones making the decisions for ourselves and representing ourselves. So I think we wanted to really do that and evolve the culture. Coming back full circle after cooking Mediterranean and Italian food for so long, cooking Cantonese food, I just feel this is the right path that I'm going on. We want to continue the legacy of Chinatown because it gave us our childhood and we want to be able to give that energy back to the community um, for the next generations and the generations to come.